Hi everyone, it's Lisa. Thank you so much for joining me today. In today's video, I'm going to make some Christmas cards using a brand new die set from Spellbinders, which is called Merry Stitchmas. And what's fun about this die is that you can actually use some embroidery floss and you can stitch all of the little ornaments on the Christmas tree. So here's a look at what the die comes with. It has the outside shadow piece and it also has the inside Christmas tree piece. So on the inside piece you can see all of those little circles and they do cut out circles on your cardstock and you can actually use your embroidery floss and stitch all of those circles. Now you don't have to use embroidery floss. You can totally use this die without doing the embroidery piece and you can just back it up on a piece of cardstock and let the cardstock shine through those little holes. But you have that option which makes it so versatile. So when you die cut both of these dies together, just like I've shown here, you will get this die cut, which is the white die cut here on the left. So it actually cuts the holes in the tree and cuts the tree out of the paper. If you just use the inside piece by itself, it would just cut the Christmas tree design into your cardstock without cutting it out. And then using the outside shadow piece, it gives you just the shadow layer. So you can then layer on the stitched piece on top of the shadow layer and you can die cut these in any color you want. Here I'm just showing you the gold and white so you can see the pretty gold foiling through all of those holes in that cardstock. So for my cards today, I am going to show you how to do the embroidery. I'm also going to show you how to use the dies without. So I did go by my local Joann's store and I picked up some embroidery floss. I wanted to go with a traditional Christmas theme and also a non-traditional. So I did pick up some light purples and pinks and some of the more traditional greens, reds, and golds and silvers. So here I'm going to start with the green and the embroidery floss comes in six strands. So I just cut a piece of the embroidery floss and then I separated it into three strands and threaded my needle. So to thread the needle I find it easiest to kind of loop the thread so you can see that it forms a loop and then thread it that way. That way all of those strands can be sure to get in to my tapestry needle. And make sure that you're using a needle that will actually fit the thickness of the thread that you're using. So you can see I've already started doing some of the threading and I want to just show you this line here. So you can see how I start coming in with the needle from the bottom and I do not have a knot on the back of this thread so I'm kind of just making sure that I hold it with my finger on the back of the Christmas tree as I come down into the center hole. So then I come up through one of the outside holes on the circle and then I come down into the center and I just continue that process all the way around this little ornament in this one little spot. And you definitely want to make sure that you're pulling your thread tightly so that you don't have any loose threads. So every time you come up and then down in to the hole, pull that thread tight. So here I'm just showing you a little bit up close. So coming up through the bottom and then down through the center hole. And I just do that completely around this circle. Sometimes the thread might get caught on the side of the die cut, which is perfectly fine. Just use your hand and manipulate your thread so that it's not caught up on the edge. So once I finish one of these circles or ornaments on this Christmas tree, I will move over to the ornament immediately to the left of the one I'm working on and continue on in this manner to finish up this row. Now as I turn the Christmas tree over, I still have this loose piece from when I started the stitching. So I'm just going to put it in a straight line and just hold it tight on the bottom of my die cut. And then I'm going to start stitching my second circle or my second ornament on this Christmas tree. So I go ahead and come in through one of the outside holes coming up through the bottom and then coming down in through the center hole. Pulling that tight while still holding onto that straight line of thread. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to position that line of thread in a manner so that I can secure it to the back side of this die cut. So now when I come in through the bottom hole 
on that circle or on that ornament. Notice that I'm actually hooking that line so that it secures it to my die cut. And now when I flip it over, I'm looking at the front and I continue on with my stitch and I stitch down into the center hole. Again, pulling that tight. And then I continue on to my next stitch, coming up through one of the holes on the outside circle and down through the center. And every time I come down through the center, I will flip that over, just making sure that that thread that I was holding in that straight line is still secure. So you can see what I'm doing here, just trying to keep that straight line of thread secure, so just so, so that it doesn't come loose as I continue to work on this stitching. Now, if for some reason you happen to forget about that loose strand and you're not able to secure it, don't worry because I actually did that on another stitch on this die cut. And all I did is put some double-sided adhesive tape to secure the um, loose strands down. And you'll see me do that here in a little bit. So once I have that entire row completed, I just turn my die cut over and I know that I'm done with this green part for now. So I just take my needle and just run it through the back of the stitching that I've already completed just to secure this so that it does not come loose. So just pull that really well. And then if you wanted to do it again, just to make sure that it is secure, just come again through some of that green stitching and then pull the needle through to tighten that up and secure it. And then once you are done with that, just snip it off and then you're ready to move on to the next row. And I just wanna show you real quick how I do the bottom of the tree. So the actual die cut Christmas tree has some lines on it. They're almost like directional lines, which will show you how you need to do your stitching. So I start off by coming up through the back of the die cut on the very top right hole on that tree bark and then I come down through one of the holes on the bottom of that tree bark and I'm forming kind of like an X. So when I come down, I'm coming down on not the one right underneath it, but the one in a diagonal to the hole that I came up through the bottom. And then once I finish that strand, I come immediately to the right on the bottom hole and come up through that one and then make an X so I cross over and I'm making an X crossing the diagonal line that I already have and I'm coming down through the second hole on the top of that tree bark. Making sure that you're pulling the thread tight and then I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to come up through the third hole from the bottom so again, making a crisscross shape, and then I'm going to go down onto the top hole at a diagonal. And then I'm gonna continue in that manner, just going in a crisscross shape until that bark is completed. Okay, so I wanna show you just one more time this time I'm going to be switching into my non-traditional Christmas colors. So I'm just separating my strands here. Remember each thread has about six strands and I separate it into three. And then I'm just gonna take three of those strands. I'm gonna form the end into a loop and then I'm going to thread my needle. So here's my Christmas tree die cut. So just like with the previous one, I'm coming up through the bottom of the die cut on one of the outside circles and I'm going to come down into the die cut into the center circle and I am holding that thread in the back so I'll turn it over here just a minute so you can see it so here's that loose thread so make sure that you move it out of the way and just kind of hold it down with your finger and now I'm gonna to go to the next circle coming in from the bottom or up from the bottom of that die cut. And as I come in through the bottom, notice that I'm actually hooking that loose strand already on the back of the die cut. That way it stays secure and it doesn't accidentally slip out of the hole. So you can see how it's hooked in here, nice and secure. And I'm gonna keep my finger on that strand as I continue to work throughout this circle. So now I'm gonna come in through the center 
And if I turn this die cut over, you will actually be able now to see that that loose thread is continuing to be secured with each stitch. Now this particular Christmas tree, I'm doing a different pattern. So the previous Christmas tree, I did all red in a row, all green in a row, and I did that pattern. So this Christmas tree, I'm doing every other one a different color. So I'll have my dark ornament here, and then to the right of that will be the lighter purple, and I'll do it that way. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and when this ornament is finished, I'm going to secure the embroidery floss on the back and cut it off and move to another color. So once again, to secure it, I'm just flipping the die cut over and I'm putting my needle through some of those other stitches. I'm just going to stitch through there. It's gonna get caught there on the tip, but that's not a problem. Just fix your thread. And then I'm just gonna loop it through to get a knot and pull that tight, okay? And now that stitching is secure and then I could just cut off the end. And then I can start with my next color, which is the light purple. Now I do want to mention, you definitely don't want to have the threads too long on the back of your die cut, because if they are too long, what's going to happen is you'll be able to see little threads extending through some of those horizontal lines that represent the garland when you're all said and done. And you don't want to have any threads extending through that garland because it just won't look nice on your finished product. So you want to make sure that all the loose strands on the back are cut very short. And you'll see me here in just a minute. Go ahead and tape everything down in case there are any other loose strands. Okay, so let's go ahead and put these die cuts together. So I went ahead and die cut that large shadow piece out of some gold mirror cardstock. And I'm taking the piece that I embroidered, I'm turning it over. And here's where I'm just putting some double sided adhesive tape on the back of all of the stitching, just to make sure if there's any loose ends that they're secure. And also to make sure that none of the loose ends extend into that garland area where I was talking about earlier, because you don't want to have any of the embroidery just extending beyond there otherwise you're not going to see that really pretty gold foiling behind the die cut once it's put together so I'm just peeling back the backing on that double-sided tape and then I'm actually going to put some double-sided foam adhesive on the back of this Christmas tree because you can't glue this flat to your mirror cardstock. It's just not going to work because you have all that embroidery on the back. Now, if you didn't do the embroidery, yes, you can glue it flat to the shadow layer, but because that embroidery is there, you're not going to be able to. So I'm just taking some double-sided adhesive foam. I am putting glue on the back of it, even though it does have sticky adhesive. Because I'm putting it on the actual embroidery thread, I want to make sure that it stays secure. So I'm just putting some glue on that and then sticking it down. And then when I peel back the backing off of that double-sided adhesive foam, I'm going to put some glue on the backing part and then adhere it down to that gold mirror cardstock. So you can see all of the dimension, not only within the die cut piece itself, because it's up on foam, but also all that embroidery adds so much dimension to your piece. So let's go ahead and start putting this card together. I am using the Spellbinders Elegant Twist Ovals and I'm stacking the two dies together on this pattern paper, which is some Christmas pattern paper that I picked up at Michael's a few years back that I had in my stash. So I'm gonna go ahead and secure these dies down to this pattern paper and then I'll run this through my die cutting machine. And when that comes out of the die cutting machine, this is what you get, this fun oval with all these little cutouts on the edge. And then I'm just gonna take the outside oval die and die cut a piece of white cardstock. And that white cardstock is going to be the background piece for the oval with the cutout. So I'm just putting glue on the back of the pattern paper. And then I'm gonna apply that to the white oval die cut piece so you can see the white coming through on those little cutout pieces. 
Next I'm going to stamp out a sentiment and I'm going to do some embossing. So I did put some powder down on this white cardstock and I'm inking up my stamp with some Versamark ink. The stamp I'm using is from the Spellbinders All Aboard Christmas Kit which I previously made several cards with that kit and I will put a link to that video down below. So that's where the stamp came from. And now I'm sprinkling some gold embossing powder over top of that sentiment. And then I'm going to heat set that to melt the embossing powder. Next, I'm going to use my scissors and I'm just going to fussy cut out the word wonderful. So I'm just going to trim very close to those letters until the whole word is cut out. And then I'm just gonna trim down the smaller sentiment so that it's just a rectangle shape. I cut down a piece of the gold mirror cardstock so that it measures four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And I did cut the center out just so that I can save the center, but I'm adding that gold mirror cardstock to an A2 size card base, which measures four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm just cutting down a piece of white scrap paper to fill in the center so that when I add my next layer that it lays flat. And then I'm taking this red glitter paper that I had in my stash. This also was from the All Aboard Spellbinders Christmas Kit. I just had some extra laying around. So I cut that down to four by five and a quarter and added that right on top of the gold mirror cardstock. And then I'll add that oval right on top of that. So the Christmas tree is gonna go in the center of that oval, but I'm gonna put it up towards the top center so I'll go ahead and adhere that down. And I'm putting it up high because I wanna add the word wonderful underneath. So I wanna have plenty of room to add the sentiment underneath that Christmas tree. Next, I'm going to take the small rectangular sentiment that I cut out and add it there to the Christmas tree. So the sentiment says, may your holidays be wonderful. And look at all that dimension on this card. So here is another card that I made using the non-traditional colors, same exact layout. I did back the Christmas tree on some silver mirror card stock. The star paper in the back is from an old Lawn Fawn paper pad. The purple and white striped paper is from a Stamps of Life paper pad. I did do the embossing on the joy and love sentiment with some silver embossing powder. And then there on the inside, I stamped out this holiday season. So it says, wishing you lots of joy and love this holiday season. So here are the two cards that I made using the embroidery on the Christmas tree. But I also want to show you how you can use this die if you don't do the embroidery. You Maybe you just don't have time or you just never got into the stitching. You can still use this die set without it. So here I die cut the top layering piece out of some pink cardstock and the bottom shadow layer I die cut out of some gray cardstock and I'm just gluing the pieces together. And you can do any color combinations that you want. So here I chose again another non-traditional color, but you can also do the traditional colors. Here, for example, is a red Christmas tree with a green background. And if you put those two together, you have a really pretty tree as well. Okay, so moving on, I am using also another piece of pattern paper from the Spellbinders All Aboard Christmas Kit. The pattern paper is cut down to three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. And then I took a piece of white cardstock and I just cut it into a snowy hill just using my scissors. Of course, if you had a die that you wanted to use for the hillside, you can always die cut a piece of white cardstock. I added the snowy hill border to my pattern paper and I just trimmed off the excess. And now I'm going to stamp out the word wonderful onto the snowy hill border. I'm gonna do some heat embossing, so I am gonna run my powder powder tool over top of that white cardstock and then I'm gonna use my Versamark ink ink that up and stamp out the word wonderful and then I'm going to use some silver embossing powder and I'm going to sprinkle that on and if there are any little pieces of embossing powder where they shouldn't be just use a small paintbrush and just wipe them away Next, I'm going to use my heat tool and I'm going to heat set that embossing powder. And then I'll add that layer to a piece of pink cardstock that measures four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And then I'll add that to an A2 size card base. Add my Christmas tree right to the top. And now you get to decorate your Christmas tree. So I'm just taking some silver 
gems and I'm going to add them to the center of each one of those circles on the front of that Christmas tree. I stamped out another sentiment that says have yourself a and I just trimmed it out into a rectangle shape and I'm adding it there at the top of the card so it'll say have yourself a wonderful and then on the inside I'm stamping out the word Christmas. So that will complete this card. Have yourself a wonderful Christmas. So again, it's just another way of showing you how to use this die without doing the stitching. So here are my cards. Leave me a comment down below and let me know which card was your favorite. And if you're interested in this product, links will be down in the description box. If you like this video, as always, click that thumbs up button and be sure to subscribe for more card making inspiration. Thanks for watching and have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.